Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the Tuesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. We call it our Tract and Truth Tuesday. That's the title we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts. My announcer has already told you that this radio program is sponsored by a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated. And that word tracks is not spelled like it typically is in the normal everyday usage. The word tracks is spelled T. R-A-C-T-S. It's referring to a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation as declared in the Bible. Every day in the broadcast, we talk about a gospel tract and we open the Bible and explain passages from the Bible. In our present day, we're working through the book of 2 Peter, but it's Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we're willing to set aside our verse-by-verse study of a book of the Bible to come and just emphasize in a very overt way the sharing of the gospel, the use of gospel tracts, and that's exactly where we're headed today. Right now, my Bible is open to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Many of you know that John chapter 3 has the story of Nicodemus, and there's a famous phrase there. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read one phrase here in just a moment. It'll be the focus of our time. It'll be the focus of the story I want to tell you about me sharing the gospel. You see, recently I was out in my community with the goal of sharing the gospel. Our local church uh, that my wife and I attend was getting ready for a vacation Bible school week. So our church family spent some time canvassing various communities with flyers about vacation Bible school. Now we have really two goals in all of this. Goal number one was to look for children that we could invite to go to our Bible school. Goal number two was to hopefully get into some gospel conversations conversations with people as we knocked on the doors. Well, I was out a couple of times doing this, and I was going from house to house with a friend each time, and no one really gave us any hard time about us being there. Uh, even when there weren't children that, living at those various houses, they adults would take our tracks from us, and we would invite them to come to church. One time, though, I got into a house, or got to a house, that there was a little girl, but the little girl was too young to come to our Bible school. So I began to talk to the mother. She was born in India. She was born a Hindu, but she really didn't practice Hinduism anymore. She and her husband, who was not Hindu, they were attending a church, and that is where the gospel conversation began. And I'll pick it up right there here in just a moment. I mentioned those gospel tracts here, and I've told you what they are. I have a gift I want to give you. That gift is this. I want to put into your hands a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. There are 41, 42 different tracks in there. And beloved, I want you to have it. I want you to get these evangelism tools. As you get them, read them. If you know Christ, read the tracks. And the reason is this. By you reading those tracks, you are going to be strengthened and they're going to help whittle on you to help you be sharper in telling the gospel. And we all need help in being more proficient in telling the gospel. But number two, you're going to find various tracks here that you're going to say, I like this track. I like that track. I want to get more of those. I want to give them out as I go through my day, day by day at work, at the store, my next door neighbor, whatever. You're going to find some evangelism tools there. Now, one of the tracks that's in the sample packet is this one. It's entitled simply Born Again. 
born again. It picks up on that verse where my Bible is open to, John chapter 3, verse 7. These are the words of Jesus Christ. If you have a red letter Bible, these words are in red. Jesus said these simple words, ye must be born again. There is so much confusion about that term. I'm going to talk to a lady in a moment, tell you the story of talking to her. I used the term born again, and she did not know what it meant. But a lot of people who were not born Hindu or whatever, they're born and they go to church all their life. They're confused about what it means to be born again. It's a pretty significant statement Jesus makes. He said, you must be born again. Do you know how to explain the term born again? Do you know what it means? This simple gospel track will lay it out clearly, simply. You'll know it better, and when you give it out, somebody else will know what it means, and that Jesus said they need to be born again. Get it from me, please. At the end of the program, my announcer will give our contact information. Wait for that. Jot down the method that works for you, or just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. You can give us your name and address. We'll send you the sample packet free. Jesus said you must be born again. Let me go back to the story about this lady. I spoke to this lady. I'm going to call her Mary. She was very willing to talk about religious matters. But because she was born as a Hindu, she was not attending a Hindu uh, place of worship. Her husband was not Hindu. They had, though, been attending a Protestant church. So here at this point in the conversation, I ask a couple of questions. Question number one was this. I said, Mary, based upon your Hindu upbringing, what have you learned from Hinduism about how to get the sin stain off of your heart? I didn't ask her if she knew she was a sinner. She already knew she was. She understood exactly what I meant. She really, though, did not want to answer the question because she didn't know. And actually, Hinduism doesn't really deal with the sin stain. It focuses on externals. Well, finally, I turned to Mary. I said, Mary, your Hindu teachers never told you how to remove the sin stain off your heart, did they? She said, no, they didn't. Well, then I asked her about the church that she and her husband and her girl had been attending recently. I said, what have they told you about how to get rid of the sin stain off your heart? And again, she said, they really haven't told us anything about that. At this point, I said, Mary, our church, the one that my wife and I attend, our church exists for really two basic reasons. Reason number one is we want to help people to know how to have the sin stain removed from their heart, from their soul, and have the gift of eternal life. But then our other goal is we want to help those who do have eternal life to know how to live their day-to-day life to please the God who saved them from the sin stain on their heart. Now, Every time I share the gospel, beloved, I do it a little differently depending on the situation and the prompting of the Spirit of God. At this point, I said, Mary, I asked them, Mary, have you ever heard the words born again? Have you ever heard of them used any place at church or whatever? She said, yes, yeah, she had, but she didn't know what that term means. I said, Mary, you've got a little girl here that's three years of age. I said, Mary, do you know what it means to have a physical birthday? Well, of course she did. On your actual birthday, I said, you are born, your life begins, and you become part of a family. That's called a physical birth. I said the birds born again are Jesus' words. They refer to a different birthday. Born again talks about the day you become part of God's family because you get spiritual or eternal life. I said to Mary, You've never had a spiritual birthday, have you? No, she said, I hadn't. Then I said, here is why you need one. Then I spoke to her about sin, what sin is, what it does to us when we're sinners. The Bible says the wages of sin is spiritual death, I told her. I told Mary that she is what the Bible calls spiritually dead. Now, she didn't wrinkle her brow. She didn't uh, get angry. She just nodded in agreement. She understood what I was saying. And I told her that there was nothing that she could do to change her spiritual deadness. But then I asked about her little girl. 
I ask, what did your little girl do to get her physical life? Well, nothing, Mary said. Then I spoke about Jesus, who he is, why he came, and why he died on the cross. I spoke about his resurrection from the dead. I shared that Jesus came to offer every person everlasting life. But I said, it's his life. It's the life of Jesus. He's God. He died so that we can have eternal life. He died to and shed his blood to pay our sin debt. Now, all along the way, I was quoting Bible verse after Bible verse. I didn't give her the references. She probably didn't know that all I was saying were Bible verses, but I did. I told her that she needed to be given eternal life. She cannot earn it. Just like her little girl was given her physical life, Mary needed to be given her spiritual life if she was ever going to be changed from spiritual deadness to spiritual life. Now, Mary tried to sidetrack me by saying that she thinks that all the Hindu gods and all Jesus and all the other religious gods are really just all the same people, all different names referring to the same God. I said, smiling, I said, Mary, you know that can't be true. If they were all the same, then they would all teach the same thing but they don't. I said, what you grow up hearing is is a Hindu in the Hindu temple and what you've been hearing at that Protestant church, they're not the same thing at all, are they? She said, no. I said, so all these gods can't be the same. They can't be referring to the same being, eternal being, just with different names because they teach different things. Now, I finally said, Mary, which of the other gods that you ever heard about, read about, which of these other gods has ever claimed to rise from the dead? She said, none at all. I said, but Jesus did. Jesus said he was going to die, and Jesus proclaimed he would rise again. He said he would do it on the third day. Jesus knew what was happening. He was God. He knew why he was dying on the cross, and he told people he would rise from the dead. If Jesus really did that, really rose from the dead, I said, then he alone is the only true and living God. He's the only one with the proof that he can give to you eternal life because he defeated physical death. He can give you eternal life after your physical life is gone and done and over. Oh, friend Mary, (laughs) she had never heard the gospel before. Beloved, I run into so many people who have never heard the gospel before, not because they were born in India or some other country. They were born here in the United States. I met people born here who did not know the real issue behind Easter. Well, like many who hear the gospel for the first time, Mary was overwhelmed. When I said, Mary, you need to receive Christ to have his eternal life, she was not ready. I gave her two tracks, one, this one, born again that I spoke of, and one about our church and how to find our church, and it too told the gospel. And with that, I said, Mary, I'm going to be praying for you. Please come and visit our church. And she said, you know, my husband and I were looking for a church that talked more from the Bible. Well, that says something about the church she was attending. I hope you attend a Bible teaching, preaching church. If you don't, go to one that does. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.